Happy day, friends. I am here to share a conversation that Spirit placed on my heart to share. And it's about escaping the mental and emotional loops that we find ourselves in. Um, so if you are currently, you know, living in a loop and you know that you are, but you are having trouble right? Finding ways to step outside of the loop, to escape the loop, then this would be a great conversation for you. Um, so we're going to be talking about escaping the loops, um, or we could say consciously choosing to step outside of the loop. So how do we do that? How do we, how do we choose, not how do we choose, but once we choose that that's what we're going to do, once we choose that, once we make the choice to step outside of the loops, how do we go about doing that? Like, what, what do we have to do? What actions do we need to take in order to step outside of the loops? Okay. So that's what the conversation is about. I, I'm going to share a few ways. Um, they're they're going to be really pr simple, practical ways, right? And I say simple, and I want you to hear, it's important for you to hear that simple, that these are simple, practical ways, right? What, what would stop us from stepping outside of the loops is our inability to believe, number one, that it's possible for us to step outside of the loops, to escape the loops. And then number two, our inability to remain disciplined in the practice of um, empowering ourselves so that we can escape the loops, right? Um, again, I say that it's simple and these are, these are simple and practical ways for us to escape the loops. It just requires practice and it requires commitment. It requires you to be committed to yourself. It requires you to be committed to empowering yourself. It requires you to accept that I have the answers within me to make this happen for myself, to escape the loops, right? Um, and so let's get into, so the first way that came up that I was shown um, was stop talking about it. So in order to, to escape the loops, the mental and emotional loops, you have to stop talking about it. You have to give yourself permission to stay quiet, okay? Because a lot of times what we like to do is something happens in our lives, we have an experience, or we're living in those mental and emotional loops, and we want to talk to other people about it, right? We want to, we want, and the reason why we do that is because we want to feel validated in our experience. We want to feel seen. We want to be heard, right? And so... Spirit is saying, in order for you to escape the loops, you have to stop talking about it. Or another way that we could say it is you have to stop putting so much attention and energy into the loop that you're experiencing. And whenever we are continuously talking about what we are experiencing, when we continuously talk about the stories um, and we talk about the loops, then we're putting our energy and attention into it. And so with that being said, you have this desire to escape the loop, right? But it's not really happening, right? You have the desire to escape the loop, but you're not escaping it. And you're, you're trying to like figure out why you're not escaping it. And it's, it's because your energy and attention is not being poured into empowering yourself so that you can escape it. Your energy and attention is being poured into talking about it, which causes it to continue, which causes you to continue to live in the cycle of the loop because you're continuing to bring attention and energy, pouring energy into the loop rather than pouring that energy and attention into empowering yourself so that you can escape it. 
Um, so give yourself permission to stay quiet, right? And I want to share an example from my life. A couple of years ago, I was going through the process of getting a divorce and I was in therapy, right? And I was in therapy prior to this, but at this point in therapy, we were talking about what was going on within the relationship and, um, and talking about the divorce. And um, I found myself talking, you know, being in therapy and processing through everything. And then I found myself talking to multiple friends, like a few close friends that I had, I was also talking to them about it, right? And so of course I'm dealing with sadness, anger, resentment towards myself, towards my partner at the time. Um, and just, you know, all of the feelings, the bitterness, the anger, the sadness, the hurt, the pain, you know, all of it. And so I'm finding myself talking to a couple of people consistently about it. And then I realized, <clears throat> and then it just hit me like, I have to stop talking about this, right? Because I wanted to move forward, right? The divorce was happening. It was, it was happening. Um, it wasn't something that was like, at this point, the decision was made. This is what's best. And um, so I had to bring myself to this space to where I realized I became aware of, I'm dragging this on emotionally and mentally. I'm dragging it on because I keep talking about it and I keep bringing people into the cycle, into the loop with me, whether it's for validation, whether it's just to re receive comfort, which there's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting to feel supported while you're going through something, but we have to become aware of when we are, <clears throat> when we are, extending, right? You know how like you have uh, hotels and you have extended stays, right? So, um, so most of the time, whenever we're living in these loops, we're, we're not, we're staying at the extended stay, right? And so getting out of the loop, escaping the loop requires you to stop talking about it. It requires you to stay silent, to, to give yourself permission to stay silent. Um, and, and here are a few reasons why you want to stop talking about it. Because whatever loop it is that you're living in, whatever mental and emotional loop it is that you are experiencing, when you give yourself permission to stay quiet, you're able to receive the clarity that you need to help you move forward. You're able to receive the clarity that you need to help you ground into the present moment and to let go of what it is that you need to let go of. You're able to hear from your heart. When you're living in the loop, the loop lives right here, right? The loop lives in the mind. And whenever we are focused on the loop, when we're living in the loop, we're unable to hear from our heart. And so when you give yourself permission to stay quiet, that opens you up to being able to hear from your heart, to being able to receive clarity. It opens you up to be able to receive the guidance that you need in order to move forward. It opens you up to receiving the wisdom that wants to be integrated through you, right? Past experiences, what, whatever it is, whatever they are, they hold wisdom within them. They hold lessons within them. And so if we're so fixated on the loop and we're, we're, um, there's a word that I want to say here, but I can't find it. We're perpetuating the loop, right? Um, we can't be open to the lessons. We can't see the lessons. We're just stuck on this is happening to me. I'm in this loop. This is how it's making me feel. I There's no way out of feeling like this. And that's just not true, right? So again, going back to, you have to give yourself permission to believe that it's possible for you to escape the loop because it is. All of us have the ability to escape the loop, right? And then we have to identify 
where the loop started. And the note that came through with this, well, let me back up. So first of all, this is why doing the inner work is important, right? Doing the inner work is really important because what we'll find is that the current version of who you are is living in the loop, right? But the current version of who you are is living in a loop that was created in the past, right? The current version of you is living in a loop that was created at some point in the past. So a lot of the loops that we live in have been passed on, right? Whether they've been passed on from parents or just society in general, or, you know, whether something happened to us in our childhood or at adolescence or even early adulthood, these loops were created in the past. So in order to escape the loop, we need to be open to doing the inner work so that we can identify where the loop started. Because if I can go back to where the loop started, then what I can do is I can empower, right? And mentally and emotionally, I can disconnect, first of all, is what I'm hearing. I can make the disconnect. I can disengage. I can detach myself from being so identified with that version of myself because it's a subconsciously, if this loop started when I was 13, I can see how, okay, the way that my 13-year-old self interpreted what, what happened or what was going on, I'm still allowing that interpretation to dictate my current narrative. And so then I can give myself permission to detach from that interpretation so that I can be present. Right. All right. So the inner work is super important because it shows you living in this loop. But really, you living in your freedom right now frees that version of you in the past that first started living in the loop. Okay, so the version of you right now, who you are right now, has a responsibility to live in your freedom, because then every past version of you that experienced the loop that you're living in right now is freed, all right? And then in order to escape the loops, we have to let go of grudges. Again, grudges are held in the mind, right? And whenever we are holding on to grudges, when we are pouring energy and attention into these grudges, and when we, and not even pouring energy and attention into them, excuse me, because a lot of times we just make a decision subconsciously that I'm going to hold this grudge. And most of the time when you find yourself holding a grudge today in the present moment, the grudge is based on, I'm holding a grudge against this person in present day because 20 years ago, I had a similar experience with someone else or in some other way. I had a similar, I, I had an experience that caused me to feel similar feelings. And so I'm projecting that onto the present day experience. And so I'm going to hold this grudge. And a lot of times, again, it's a subconscious decision that we're making because our interpretations of past experiences are oftentimes dictating the current narrative that we're living in. So we have to let go of, the, of grudges because they keep us, again, from, they, they cause us or keep us from being able to hear from our heart. And in order to escape the loops, having a relationship with our heart 
with our soul, with our inner self is so important because if I want to escape the loops, my soul carries this wisdom. And in order for me to hear the wisdom, my heart has to be still. I need to be still in order to be able to hear the wisdom. Okay, so then that means forgiveness is necessary, right? And a lot of times, you know, we hear people say, you're not forgiving someone else for them, you're forgiving someone else for you. And as I was meditating over this, spirit showed me that it's, it's not even, forgiveness isn't even about forgiving someone else. It's not. Um, because here's the thing, when we're living in the present moment, Forgiveness is like, forgiveness is such an easy task. When we're, when we're giving ourselves permission to be present, when we're giving ourselves permission to live from a place of acceptance, forgiveness is such an easy task because we, we have a willingness to let go. We have a willingness to accept what is. So forgiveness isn't about another person. Forgiveness is more so about looking at the past and deciding to be done with it, right? Deciding to be done with it. Decide, it's, it's about looking at the past and deciding, okay, that is almost non-existent because here I am in this present moment. And this is all that's occurring. If I'm allowing myself to be present, this is me recording this right now and having this conversation. This is all that that is. Nothing else exists outside of this moment. And if I give myself permission to dwell in the present moment, then I can look at the past and say, it has nothing for me. There's nothing back there for me to hold on to because it is what it is, right? Um, and so forgiveness is about looking at the past and deciding to be done with it. And it's about consciously choosing to release the past from your grip so that you can move forward in love and peace. When we're holding unforgiveness within our hearts, uh, within our minds, right? And I really want to make that distinction unforgiveness and grudges and bitterness and resentment, none of that lives right here. The heart is so pure. None of that lives in this energy field, right? It all lives in the mental space. It all lives in the mental mind and the emotional, uh, in the emotional body and the mental body. All of that lives there. And a lot of times that's where we spend much of our energy. And so in order for us to escape the loop, we have to make a decision to live from the heart rather than from the mental interpretations of what this experience is or of what past experiences were, okay? Um, and then in order to escape the mental loops, you have to allow yourself to be a witness to the changes that you've made and to the changes that others have made as well, okay? So if you find yourself holding yourself in shame, if you find yourself just riddled with guilt, oftentimes it's not because of anything that's happening in this present moment. Oftentimes it's because of things, mistakes that we've made in the past, mistakes that other people have made in the past. And so in order for you to escape the mental and emotional loops, you have to be a witness to the ways in which you have changed. So with this one, what you can do to actively practice being a witness is you can write down, like, how did I used to show up in the past? in the relationship with my, that I have with myself, in the relationships that I had with other people, how was I showing up in those relationships? Write down, write that down, list it over here on one side. And then on the other side, ask yourself, how am I showing up in my relationship with myself today? 
how am I showing up in the relationships that I have with other people today? And then look at the list and notice, be a witness to the ways in which you've changed and allow yourself to be grounded in the changes that you've made. So I'm reading a book right now and um, part of something that I highlighted in the book says, can you trust the path of change itself? And it's the conversation is around self-discipline and it's saying that a part of self-discipline is giving yourself permission to trust the path of change. So can you, will you allow yourself to trust the path of change? Because number one, the path of change is what has led you to where you currently are. And a lot of times because we subconsciously aren't trusting the path of change, we stay stuck in the loops. So a lot of times we could have, we could have escaped the loops a long time ago. And now I always say healing is in the awareness. When we make ourselves aware, then we can begin to really intentionally escape the loops that we've been living in. So can you trust the path of change? Can you allow yourself to accept that all of the changes that I've experienced are what led me to where I am? All of the changes that I've experienced in the past um, are what led me to living with more of a, a, a pure heart, a pure mind, an open heart, right? I let go of distrust and I'm more open now because I know that I'm protected, because I know that this experience is so sacred and so divine and so holy. So I'm not going to hold on to anything else from the past. I'm not going to hold on to the past anymore. I'm not going to live in the loops anymore, because I know that this life is so full, so vast. I have to let it go so that I can experience the fullness of this present moment, okay? Then you have to, along with being a witness to the changes that you've made and allowing yourself to be a witness to the changes that other people have made, this people's past onto who they currently are, right? And we have to remember that everyone is unlearning limiting behaviors and patterns. And it's a process for everyone. It's a process for everyone. So when you are engaging in relationships with people today, can you see the fullness of who they are rather than allowing your projection of who they were in the past to determine how you engage with them in this current moment, right? So it's you saying to yourself, okay, I know how I experienced this person in the past, but because I'm new, because I've changed, I'm going to choose to no longer interpretation from the past onto who they I'm going to allow myself to experience them as they are today. And then as you, of course, give yourself permission to experience people as they are today, you find out the how you need to integrate boundaries. And that's the last note that I have on, you know, how do we escape the loops? It's once you give yourself permission to stop projecting past interpretations onto the current moment, then you are able to engage fully with people. And then you can see, okay, what boundaries do I need to integrate? And not even what boundaries do you need to integrate with others, but what boundaries do you need to integrate with yourself? And I've kind of had this conversation in the past where it's been shown to me whenever it comes to boundaries that really boundaries have nothing to do with anybody else. 
it really, you know, you're not, you're not putting up boundaries between yourself and other people. You're not implementing boundaries as a result of how you experience other people. You are implementing boundaries with yourself, right? So if I'm implementing a boundary with myself, then I know that because I'm upholding this boundary with my I affect it from, you know, I have a good example right now, but if I'm implementing my boundaries, right, if I have this boundary with myself, then I can know that certain experiences won't take place or may not have the kind of effect on me that they would have had on me in the past because I have these boundaries in place. So um, when it comes to escaping, you know, the mental and emotional loops, you have to have boundaries. So we can use relationships as an example for boundaries, right? You've going back to my divorce, you've, and this was a big part of me living in the loop right? I want to move forward. I want, that's my desire. My desire is to move forward, but right. How, how am I, am I, (laughs) this is, first of all, it's making me laugh because I'm just like, I'm chuckling on the inside because wow. Um, so just using, getting a divorce as an example and using relationships as an example as, you know, period, you know that this relationship is coming to an end, yet you find yourself still seeking them out or you find yourself still, um, you know, engaging with them um, to a certain degree. And at some point I just had to decide, like, I want to move forward emotionally, mentally. I want to move forward. I want to escape this loop, right? That I'm in of asking the questions like, well, what if we would have done this? Or, you know, what if we would have gone this way? All of those kinds of questions are when you're living in the loop, those are the kinds of questions that you ask. What if this, what if that, um, you know, and, and so putting boundaries in place for myself allowed me to escape the loop, right? And is it hard? Yes, it's hard. It's hard to escape the, I don't want to say, okay, yes. It's hard to practice, to put into practice, escaping the loop because we're so used to being in it. But the more that we practice, the more we give ourselves permission to trust the the path of change, the easier it becomes. So that's why at the beginning, whenever I was saying these are simple and practical steps, it's because they are, right? And the more that we allow ourselves to practice these steps, the easier it becomes, the more, the simpler it becomes. So consciously choosing to step outside of the loops. And I feel like part of the reason why this conversation is, is so important right now is because, you know, we had the pandemic and that really changed a lot of shit for everyone. And I think that, you know, it was easy for people to, people's lives were changed, right? Every everyone's lives were changed whenever the pandemic occurred. And the pandemic is, for the most part, it's over, right? And it can be so easy to fall back into the patterns, the loops that we were living in prior to the pandemic. The pandemic gave us an opportunity. It was an opportunity for us to tune in, to get still, to get quiet, to reflect, to contemplate. And if you're seeing this video, if you're watching this video, then I would say that this is a call to you um, for you to, to back up, to take a step back and to notice, did I fall back into some loops that I was living in prior to the pandemic? Did I fall back into some patterns? And if so, now 
God is calling you to consciously choose, right? Because the pandemic occurred and that wasn't really a conscious choosing for people, right? It was something that was thrown on us. And so um, looking at this is God saying to you now, you get to consciously choose to escape the loops, to step outside of the loops. Whereas like, you know, when something happens, something drastic happens in life, like that's like something drastic happening. So it's like, yeah, it kind of catches our attention, but then almost always, because it wasn't a conscious choosing, we fall back into the patterns. And so you're being called to consciously choose to step outside of the loops, to consciously choose to release those limiting patterns that have kept you living in the loops for so long. And, um, and once you give yourself permission to, to make that choice, you'll, you'll just watch everything that every door that you thought was closed to you, you'll begin to see those doors open up with such ease. So I love you. I'm really grateful to you for being here, for hearing um, this word and for, you know, listening and engaging with this conversation. And I just want to say cheers to consciously choosing to step outside of the loops uh, because your life is going to change because you've made that choice for yourself. And not only will your life change, but the people who surround you on a day to day, they will, they, and they won't even realize it, but their lives will also be changed. And you will have some people who will realize it and you will have some people who won't. Um, and that's okay. It's not your responsibility to, you know, decide who gets to, um, benefit or who gets to, um, you know, experience change as a result of being connected to you. So keep your heart open, give yourself permission to just make the choice to, you know, to step outside of the loops and know that a lot of things will fall away because you're making this choice. And a lot of things will fall in because you're making this choice. I love you. And if you have any thoughts, any questions, leave it in the comment. If this resonated with you and you are not a subscriber to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, I'll holler at you later.